In my previous video on Gerd Wilders and his impact on the modern Western world, I focused on an element of, I suppose, um, Western historical hypocrisy in terms of immigration. Most European countries have diaspora in uh, either the Americas or Southwest Europe, um, and they're usually quite proud of them. They're proud of the achievements of the diaspora that they've set out. Just about any European country you care to mention has a diaspora. And I said that uh, that's sort of hard to reconcile with modern attitudes towards immigration into Europe when Europeans have traditionally been the ones sending people out. Now, to be perfectly honest, the Europeans are by no means the only or even the worst offenders in this regard. Another place in the world that has a gigantic culture of immigration, probably even more all-encompassing than the West, than um, either Europe or the Americas, at least at the present time, is the Persian Gulf. Uh, the oil states, or now the um, oil money administrator states of the Gulf, such as Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Qatar, Bahrain, um, and such places, the UAE, import large numbers of workers, generally from other Muslim countries. There are some, occasion, uh, some exceptions here or there. A lot of Hindu Indians and, Sri and Buddhist Sri Lankans go to the Gulf, or Hindu Sri Lankans. Um, and a large number of Filipinos are to be found in the Gulf states. <coughs> but the main sources for cheap labor, or skilled labor even, continues to be the Islamic world. Now, a lot of the people that come to the Persian Gulf seeking employment from the Islamic world do quite well. If you're educated and you have some sort of skill that these Gulf states need, not just necessarily attached to the petroleum industry, but to health care, um, banking, any of this sort of thing, you can do quite well. You can live quite well. You'll never get any political uh, clout. There's no question of ever getting citizenship in any of these places. Um, but at least materially, you'll do reasonably well. If you're an Indonesian, however, or a Filipino domestic servant, you're essentially at the potentially brutal mercies of your employer. There's constant scandals taking place in the media of Indonesia and the Philippines concerning the wretched treatment received by um, immigrant labor into the Gulf states. And um, there's a dialogue that is constantly going on about this, but nothing ever seems to get concretely done. Essentially what it is, is there's a huge difference between the people who hold the passports of these countries, who are often in the minority in their own countries, who actually have citizenship in these countries, and foreign workers. And even within the foreign worker community, there's a huge um, vertical mosaic, as the Canadians like to call their... Uh, system of multiculturalism. At the top um, of the non-citizen uh, population of the, most of these Gulf states stands the European skilled um, worker, the European skilled administrator or technician or consultant increasingly. Below that stands various uh, usually Indian um, technicians, Pakistanis, and below that, the various um, gradations of Arab um, and uh, Southeast Asian menial laborers. Now, this is a very blurry uh, sort of picture uh, that you actually see in real life. It's not quite as cut and dried as that, but generally speaking, that's how it goes. The second anyone in, in any of the, uh, the non-citizen population steps out of line, they're immediately deported. No questions asked, get out. In fact, there's a movement afoot right now as a consequence of the first Gulf War, when Saddam Hussein invented Kuwait, um, that is sort of aimed at removing as many as possible of the non-citizen workers. Now, whether or not that's going to work is anyone's guess, because the uh, Gulf Arabs have gotten quite used to cheap labor and creature comforts. Okay, so that 
system of immigration is completely unfair and unequitable, but after all, it is the prerogative of a country to decide who they let in and who they decide to ask to leave. It's their own country, after all. They can do as they will. That's what sovereignty is. Well, by the same token, one could apply the same sort of reasoning to Europe. And this is where Herrick Wilders actually may have an issue that he can exploit. Um, for all the talk about Herrick Wilders um, setting the stage for a new holocaust, I don't believe that. I don't want to completely discount the possibility that this could happen if his own momentum gets out of his own control. But I doubt that that's going to happen. Um, what could happen, though, is a series of incremental changes in European society that alters the composition of European society to resemble something like the present Gulf states, whereby you'll have the citizen, sh citizen uh, sector of the population, i.e. people with French passports, um, Swiss passports, Italian passports, Dutch passports, British passports, at the very top, and you'll have um, below them, a large number of immigrants who will continue to actually be there. If you ask me, it, Muslim immigrants or third world immigrants to Europe are a fact of life simply because it makes economic sense and people want their cheap labor. But what you'll have is, you'll have a guest worker program like you have in the Persian Gulf. Now this is a huge um, albatross hanging around the necks of anyone in the Islamic world or in the West who actually wants to see uh, Muslim migrants to the West get treated decently. Herrick Wilders can point at the Persian Gulf and say, look, we're only doing what you already do, already do to yourselves. It's not our fault. We didn't actually cook this idea up. You've been doing it to, to each other as Muslims for the last 30 years. So all that we want is the same thing that you want. What's wrong with that? So we'll have Europeans at the very top of the, uh, or indigenous Europeans, or people who've recently gotten uh, citizenship, say in the last 20 years, and all of their migrants are there on contracts. The second the contract expires, they're kicked out somewhat ruthlessly, just like happens in the present Persian Gulf. And um, too bad if you don't like it. This is our country. Now this, if you ask me, is a possibility in modern Europe. Because that way the Europeans can take advantage of all the benefits of immigration and still have, as it were, the whip hand over all the new arrivals. You've got two grades of people. Uh, people with all the rights that are guaranteed by the constitutions of the various countries and various human rights conventions in Europe, uh, which I suppose will actually extend to all the other immigrant workers in Europe, but um, with the strict proviso that anyone who comes into this country and creates any kind of a disturbance will be asked to leave immediately, and it's at the discretion of the receiving country whether or not um, uh, they are deported. That I can see Europe moving towards. And in many ways, the Islamic world will only have itself to blame for that. It's very difficult to demand that Europeans treat Muslim immigrants fairly when Muslim immigrants to Muslim countries are treated like dirt. It's not just the Europeans who are exploiting um, immigrants to their own countries. And they're not the worst offenders. One last little thing that I'd like to add is I am not in any way, shape or form criticizing Herrick Wilders, the Dutch politician. I'm criticizing Herrick Wilders, the fellow who has decided to take his message internationally. I just want to make that clear. European domestic politics are none of my business. Thank you.